हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यूट्यूब डॉट कॉम पब्लिक डॉक्टर वेट चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर पी आर पटेल प्रोफेसर एंड हेड वेटरनरी मेडिसिन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इम्पोर्टेंट बैक्टेरियल डिजीज फ्रॉम गाइनोकोलॉजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इज कैटल बफेलो एंड दैट इज बोवाइन जेनेटल कैंपाइलो बैक्टेरियोसिस previously it was called as a vibriosis in part 2 we will discuss pathogenesis and the clinical signs in cattle and buffalo this is the important presentation for the field veterinarian here we discuss pathogenesis of bovine genital campylobacteriosis how the different types of reproductive losses reproductive defects this disease cause that we discuss here the naturally infected bull transmit campylobacter fetus fetus or campylobacter fetus subspecies venereal from one female to another female if one female is infected it will spread the infection to the other female also via bull so bull is a transmitter but there will not be any change in the quality of semen of the bull and the breeding ability of the bull so it is not much harmful to the bull the organism establishes infection in the crypts of the fetus of bull that we already studied especially older bulls they harbor the infection in the crypts of the fetus and penis of the bull continuation of the discussion of pathogenesis the older bulls are more susceptible and the older bulls are harboring the organism because in the prepuce the crypts are more in size and more in number and in crypts of the old bulls there are micro aerophilic condition and that is a very good medium for the growth and development of this organism so older bulls are more susceptible because more size of crypts and more size of crypts and numbers of crypts are also more no uterine infection developing cow during estrus remember this is a point during estrus there is no development of infection in the cow why because there is presence of large number of neutrophils in the uterus these neutrophils won't allow the establishment of infection during estrus we continue the pathogenesis we know that during estrus period because of the large number of the neutrophils in the uterus establishment of infection is not possible but in the later stage of the estrus the organism establish the infection in the uterus especially during diastrus period when the neutrophils are less or fewer in the uterus then organisms are able to establish infection in the uterus so most of the infections are established during diastrus period within 10 days following the mating the organism establish infection in the mucous membrane of the vagina and cervix why within 10 days or after 10 days of uterus again number of neutrophils so within 10 days the organism establish infection in the mucous membrane of the vagina and cervix and the organism produce mild endometritis 
over the iritis and the survival. Three conditions the organism will develop mild endometritis, vaginitis, and cervicitis. Continuation of the pathogenesis. We already know that Campylobacter are mutile because of the polar flagellum. It has got various types of nuclei. So, the infection spread by both natural service as well as artificial insemination. Because of the motility, the organism migrate from vagina to cervix and to uterus, then to the uterine horn, then to the oviduct, and in that, they multiply the whole reproductive tract. The pathology it causes infertility and replacement. The organisms damage the cilia of epithelial lining of the oviduct and interfere with the fertilization. So first damage is causing is infertility and a repeat breeding because it damages the cilia of epithelial cells of the oviduct. So fertilization is not possible. We continue with the pathogenesis. We have seen that the organism affects the fertilization of ovum and sperm. The second thing it does is early embryonic death. If the fertilization may occur, but it causes early embryonic death of the embryo. The Campylobacter fetus reduces the oxygen and other nutrient required for implantation of embryo. For the implantation, the embryo requires oxygen and nutrients which are affected by the organism. So, Organism affects implantation of embryo and its development. The end result is early embryonic death because embryo is unable to implant. Another pathology is early abortion. It causes abortion up to four months of embryo and the embryo comes out from the vagina along with fetal membrane. Both are expelled. So it is not observed also by the owner that there is abortion occur because it is small, very small. We continue the pathogenesis. We have seen infertility, early embryonic death early abortion. In few cases there is abortion in the late pregnancy. That is abortion after fifth month. But abortion after fifth month the placenta is detained. There is a persistence of the carrier status in bulls and in cows. And this carrier status depends on the antigenic variation of the organism. We discuss here the clinical signs in bovine cattle and buffaloes caused by campylobacteriosis. The mostly characterized symptoms we discuss here we have already seen infertility Repeat breeding, prolonged luteal phase, the estrus cycle become irregular. There is early embryonic death. The fetal membranes are expelled with the fetus 
or embryo so it is difficult to diagnose there is a mucopurulent discharge from the ovary so by this clinical science we come to know that there is a great loss to the animal reproduction and thereby it affects the production so this disease is very important from gynecological point of view from production point of view we continue with the clinical signs we have seen many clinical signs infertility decreased conception rate abortion now what are the symptoms of that again during estrus there is clear discharge without infection but in case of campylobacteriosis affected cow the mucus is whitish cloudy increase in quantity of the mucus and presence of clots and flakes these are the characteristic for the diagnosis of campylobacteriosis when such things happen you one thinks about the campylobacteriosis the conception rate decrease in many countries chief signs observed is a abortion in late pregnancy that is abortion at the fourth or seventh month of pregnancy and this is accompanied with retention of placenta placenta is retained and sometimes the abortus fetus is usually shows the autolytic changes continue with the clinical signs clinician examine the cervix and clinician find that in campylobacteriosis the cervix is very hard some what and large and it is red color the characteristic of disease is that it develops a leukopurulent endometritis so the mucus exuded that develop into the uterus it is large mass of mucus it passes out through the cervix and comes out through the vagina and because of the endometritis there is it is white is cloudy color and may contain clots and flakes that is also a one of the diagnostic step for the campylobacteriosis continuation of the clinical signs in cattle and buffalo the infected heifer and first time infected cow they develop a natural immunity and it will last up to 3 to 4 years this infected heifer or first time infected cow may conceive but remain as a carrier for months and they may spread the infection to the others previously we also seen that bulls are asymptomatic they do not produce any symptom the organism they harbor in the crypts of epithelium of prepuce and penis bulls produce normal semen semen quality is not affected fertility is not affected of the semen semen is normal but it contain infection it is in use abortion is generally observed and mostly abortion occur during the last six weeks of the pregnancy that is one characteristic things observed in ewes continuation of the pathogenesis we all told already know that campylobacter are mutile because of the polar flagellum it has got various types of mutilation 
stop the infection spread by both natural service as well as artificial insemination. Because of the motility, the organism migrate from vagina to cervix and to uterus 